7.79 miles, eight minutes, 36 seconds per mile today, taking it relatively easy after yesterday's uh, long-ish run. Today, going on a little bit of a field trip, I'm gonna head down to Roadrunner Sports. They've invited me to come down and check out their perfect fit system. When they asked me to come down and check it out, I told them that I am highly suspicious of these kinds of things, and I generally feel like no matter what I do, they're gonna put me into a stability shoe and I'm not gonna like it and everyone's gonna be unhappy. But they said, come down, check it out. You're the exact type of person, a skeptic, who we want to come out and check out our system. So we're gonna go down there and we're gonna see how it goes. Here we are, Roadrunner Sports in Chicago. finished at Roadrunner Sports. I, uh, it was an interesting process. I ended up buying the insoles. They were $75 if you are a uh, VIP member, which I already happen to be at Roadrunner Sports. That is like a, it's like a $20 a year club and you get discounts. And uh, I've been using it for a little while now. Um, I'm usually not a big fan of the kind of clubs that you have to pay to be in, but uh, this one tends to work out for me since I go through so many shoes. But um, I'm currently wearing the insoles now. It's already a much more comfortable shoe. I'm not sure, it's weird. It's weird because they're, they're hugging my feet. I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about some more of my thoughts on uh, getting fit for something like that. I've had some time now to compose some thoughts. It's been about a week since I initially went to the store. But first, before I get into the rest of my thoughts regarding the insoles, I wanna go over a couple of disclosures. Uh, Roadrunner Sports isn't paying me to make this review. I paid for these insoles myself. Uh, but Roadrunner Sports and I do have a bit of a relationship. They have been sending me shoes and you've seen that already. Uh, and hopefully they'll be sending me more shoes to review in the future, but in regards to those shoes as well, they're not paying me to make any of those videos. They're not paying me to have an opinion one way or the other. If you have any qu other questions about things that may influence my opinions here or bias, 
please feel free to put them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys about it down there. I like to be as transparent as I can on this channel, whether it comes to any reviews or even the money that's coming into the channel. So uh, feel free to ask away. Uh, now, in terms of the insoles, or my original plan was I was gonna go to the store, get these, walk around in them, run with them a little bit on the treadmill, and then give you my thoughts. But I thought that that probably wasn't enough because there was, I'm not sure what was really going on with these things. So what I did was the following day, I did go on a run with these in the Ghost 11 GTX. And for that shoe, the amount of kind of structure that this thing is providing me, it's mostly in the back part of the shoe from the arch, the beginning of the arch to the heel. That's where this part, there's like a harder part here and this is the part that they mold. And the part up here, it's a little bit of stiffness in here, but mostly it's pretty flexible. All the stiffness is kind of in the back and that's where it's giving me the arch support uh, that it's telling me that I need. And when I run with this in the shoe, I didn't feel like it was making the shoe smaller, but I definitely felt like it was different. Not only because there was something hard touching the arch of my foot, which I wasn't used to, but also because it is a little bit thicker uh, than the regular insole. So I felt like everything was off a little bit, where the sides of the shoe would touch my ankle was a little bit different, where it would touch the back of my heel was a little bit different. So everything was a little bit different. I don't really think that I needed to move up a size by having this in the shoe. And it was a weird feeling. So some of the things that I don't like about the Ghost 11 GTX is that it's really distracting in the heel. There's a lot of stuff going on where I feel like the shoe is really trying to correct my form. Uh, and I did, I felt like there was less of that once I had this insole in, because I think that the way that that shoe is trying to correct my form is very consistent with the way that this thing is trying to correct or, or help me. Uh, and I ultimately, I don't think I liked it. I traded what were problems that I had in the Ghost 11 GTX, which weren't problems, they were annoyances, things that I didn't prefer uh, for different kinds of things that I didn't like and didn't prefer. I don't know if it was just that I'm not used to having more arch support, but at least on the right foot, which is one of the things that the perfect system detected was that I have two different size arches. My left arch is normal, my right arch is high. So on the right foot, there was much more going on here. And this part is stiff. And what it resulted was in, I felt not pain, but I felt fatigue all across the middle of my foot. And so that was a little bit of an unusual feeling for me. And I thought maybe that's just something I need to get used to. It's different. I'll try something new. Uh, but even throughout the rest of the run, I, it just never felt better for me. And I thought, well, at least, well, with the Ghost 11 GTX, maybe I don't need it because that shoe already has a lot of stuff going on. So I'll try it in something else. So then I took this thing and thought, well, maybe since there's a little extra cushion up in the forefoot as well, I'll put it in the shoe that's disappointing me the most this winter, and that's the Pegasus 35 Shield. Now that's a shield that I've just loved for the most part, except for when I hated it. And so the shoe feels great. I love running in it. It just feels like a Pegasus, except for in the right foot for me, it feels like there's like a dead spot in the zoom air pocket or sometimes there's just something going on in that shoe. Maybe the rubber is just a, a different kind of hardness than what's in the traditional Pegasus 35. And so some runs I would get pain under the ball of my foot or more kind of towards the middle toe, uh, but in that general area and it'd be really painful. And I thought this would really help. Now the Pegasus 35 is a little bit more of a snug fitting shoe. So I felt the difference of having this thicker insole in there a little bit more substantially. But again, it didn't really affect uh, my ability to run. Everything just felt a little bit different. But again, I still felt kind of the same fatigue in this area. And I still felt a little bit of the pain in this part of the shoe uh, that I felt uh, in the Pegasus 35 Shield. Now it wasn't to the point where it was painful, where I was altering my stride to kind of avoid hitting that painful spot. And so maybe I didn't get enough of a run in the Pegasus 35 Shield, but I did avoid most of the pain. So the test was good, but ultimately inconclusive. I felt like, well, okay, so maybe the problems that I was having with that shoe weren't arch support related, and maybe they are just a cushion related because this gave me a little bit of help but didn't completely solve all the problems that I had with my shoe. So I did one more test with the shoe. Last week I got in the Odyssey React 2. Something that I've noticed in both the Epic React and in the Odyssey React is that at a certain point in the run, usually around the six 
mile mark in those shoes, I'll get a little bit of a hot spot under one of my feet and it'll feel like there's either a little extra bit of rubbing or friction or just something that's going on there that's a little bit not painful but uncomfortable and something that I definitely noticed. And I thought, well, maybe that's something that has to do with arch support as well. So I put these into the Odyssey React 2 and that's a shoe that fits a little bit tighter to begin with. And when I put this in there, it took a tight fitting shoe and made it just downright uncomfortable. So if it's a shoe that you are borderline on terms of whether you need to size up anyway, adding this thicker insole is gonna make things even worse. It got to the point where I didn't really in enjoy running in the shoe and I was very distracted because of the, the shoe just became too small. But in trying to drill down on whether it helped the hot spot issue, I'm not really sure it helped. I didn't feel a hot spot that day. I don't always feel a hot spot when I run in Epic React shoes. Uh, I occasionally will feel it. It's an on and off thing. So I may have just gotten it on a good day or it might've been the insole working for me. But again, I felt a little bit of extra fatigue with this part of the insole touching my foot. So overall, what are my thoughts on getting the custom insoles? Uh, in terms of the custom insoles, I'm not sure that there's something for me. Maybe I do or don't have a high arch, but it's not symptomatic. And so when you give it to someone like me, I think it's like prescribing medicine to someone who's not sick. All I notice is some of the side effects and I'm not getting any of the benefits because I don't have anything to benefit. Not that I'm perfect, not that I have the perfect stride, not that there's nothing out there that I can do to improve how I'm feeling, but I just don't think that a custom insole is for me. That being said, I don't think that a custom insole is a waste of money. I think it just depends. I think that if you're running in shoes and you've, you've tried a variety of shoes and there's things that are not working for you, or if you've been diagnosed with something where you need an arch support, like by a healthcare professional, then I think definitely this is a great place to go because it customizes it to your exact foot. And I think that's really important. But overall, if you're gonna go to Roadrunner Sports, I do recommend at least getting fitted, at least getting on the treadmill so they could see how you run. Cause I do think that part is useful. I particularly like the 3D image of the foot. I like that. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of a gimmick, but I enjoyed seeing those Kaiser measurements. The interesting thing was that that perfect fit, the 3D drone foot measuring system, uh, told me that my foot size is actually an eight and a half which is interesting because I've always measured my foot using those analog metal slider things as a nine. And so uh, the biggest thing uh, that I was worried about is that the machine was gonna tell me I need stability shoes. It didn't, it told me a neutral shoe would work out just fine for me, which confirms my personal experience, not just my preference, but my personal experience in that stability shoes tend to actually create injuries for me rather than resolve any problems that I might have. In addition, they also have a couple of questions that they ask you uh, in the machine that like, you do like a little bit of a, a poll, tell it like if you have any injuries or overuse injuries and in specific, uh, or if you have any injuries or overuse injuries specifically, uh, what kind of cushioning you like, what kind of running you're doing, whether it's on road or trail, about how many miles you're doing. Uh, and so after it takes in your measurements, after it takes into account what you've seen on the video of you running on the treadmill while barefoot, it then spits that out with your preferences to give you a recommendation on a shoe. And so it gave me a recommendation on a shoe on the Pure Boost Go, uh, which was interesting because that is a shoe that I've been uh, looking at trying sometime, hopefully in the relatively near future. They brought four pairs of shoes out for me. Uh, so I looked at the Pure Boost Go, the Launch 6, uh, the Kinvara 10, and the Adazero Adios 4. None of those shoes had I actually ever tried before, except for the Kinvara 10. I ran in the Kinvara 9 a little bit last year. Um, so I had an idea of what to expect. Now, when I sat down, they put the custom insoles, since we had gone to the effort of making them before I sat down, into the shoes. And the thing that I noticed in terms of trying all these different shoes, I was really curious to, to get into them because these were four shoes that I had never tried before. And with these insoles in, they all kind of felt the same. I felt really locked down in kind of a bad way from the midfoot back almost boot-like, and then the forefoot on all these technologies, even though I was lo looking at Everrun, Boost, and Biomogo, I think that's what's in the uh, Launch 6, uh, and all of them kind of felt the same. They kind of felt all the same from the arch back, which makes sense because I had the custom insole in, and they all kind of felt the same from the forefoot to the front of the shoe, 
which was a little bit unnerving and disorienting, which ultimately brings me to kind of the problem that this 3D system, and there's two parts. So there's the, the 3D fit system where it tells you like what kind of shoes or recommends certain kinds of shoes for you. And then there's a custom insole part. You don't have to get the custom. Those things aren't connected. Uh, while I was in the store, other customers came in and instead of offering to measure your foot, they say, do you want to hop on the treadmill? We'll take a look at your stride. We'll take a look at your foot digitally um, and then figure out what shoes you need. Um, so you could do that part separately. And I think that they, they recommend that for everyone just to kind of get everyone on a base level of certain measurements and information that they can use to then make some shoe recommendations. It's for people that come into a running store that have been running for a little bit in another shoe because their friend had run in it or they're new to running or they've been running for a while in something and now they're looking for something else, something that's either more cushioned or more responsive, a little bit lighter, faster. And so they want a new recommendation, but they maybe don't know where to go. And so those are the kinds of people that I think this thing is going to be really ideal for. The problem with it is though, is that the whole like running store environment is a very artificial place to try on running shoes. Uh, and that's the ultimate down. It has nothing to do with the 3D fit system. It's the problem that I think every running store has, right? Now, I really feel like for me, I can give you a quick first take on a shoe after one entire run with the shoe, but I think I need at least five miles. Anything short of that, I don't really feel comfortable giving even a quick take on a shoe. And so for most people, they're gonna put on the shoes, walk around the store a little bit, do the rocking back and forth thing, check how much room there is at the front, and maybe hop on a treadmill. And even if they do, they're gonna do it in whatever clothes they came in, they're not gonna be in running clothes, and they're really not gonna run for more than 30 seconds. And so I think that like, even in the most like extensive try-on experience, there are limitations, right? It's a test uh, from which you gather some data and hope to extrapolate some meaningful conclusions. The 3D Fit system definitely gives you more data to start with. It gives you more of a informed starting place, even for people that might not know how to verbalize, I want a more responsive shoe, or I want a more cushioned shoe, or I need something to correct a pronation issue. I'd recommend that if you do have a Roadrunner Sports in your area, go check it out. It's interesting to do, it doesn't cost anything. I don't think they're gonna be mad. Go in there, get fit, figure out what the algorithm is going to recommend to you. And you can use that to either verify or validate the shoes you have been running in, or it might even lead you to a couple of new shoes uh, that you might not otherwise have looked at. In terms of resolving kind of the, the issue of the artificialness of a shoe trying on experience, uh, I do think that Roadrunner has a very generous return policy, so you can take it home actually break it in, uh, run a handful, not just a, a mile or two, but run a bunch of miles in the shoe to see if it really is gonna work for you. Uh, if it doesn't end up working for you and the real world experience is different than what you felt in store, you could still bring it back and return it. Uh, I think they have a pretty much a no questions asked return policy as long as it's within the return period. And I think if you're a VIP member, it's up to 90 days, which I don't, I don't think that would really apply to me. I don't think I could bring in like a 90 day old shoe with 300 miles in it and tell them I didn't like it. But uh, if you are just avoiding a shoe after a while, because it's not that comfortable, think about where you got it from. If you got it from Roadrunner, you could always take it back. And I think that's a really important. A lot of other running stores are starting to have much more generous return periods uh, as a way of differentiating and distinguishing themselves from online retailers. Uh, and so I think that's uh, definitely a move in the right direction with something like running shoes, where uh, yes, there are some shoes that I recommend to like tons of people, like the Pegasus 35, but yet there's still a lot of people that that shoe just doesn't make any sense for. And so being able to try it out, get a sense of what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and then returning it is great, because then you also have that much more information that you can give back the next time you're in there so you can pick hopefully a better shoe uh, to run with. Overall, I'm really glad that I had this experience. I think that you should all try to do it at least once uh, so you can get a sense of what your foot is. And if you do have any kind of nagging injuries, uh, I think that the information might be more useful to you than it was for me. Let me know if you've ever gone through the Roadrunner Sports Fit System or if you've gone through something similar. 
And also let me know if you have custom insoles uh, or if you've tried them, let me know how that has gone in the comments. I'd love to just get more feedback from you. I spent a lot of time on my run yesterday with my running buddy. He's tried them a whole bunch of times, uh, just picking his brain and trying to get some more information from him. So I'd love to just gather more information on that aspect from you guys uh, in the comments since you guys have such a great breadth of experience uh, across the group. Before I go, I wanna remind you about this week's charity runner. The charity runner for this week is Joel Moody. He's running the 2019 London Marathon for Prostate Cancer Research Center in the UK. As a team, they're hoping to raise over 150,000 pounds, a massive amount of money that's gonna to go towards increasing the survival rates for men affected by prostate cancer and increasing their quality of life. I've already donated $70 to Joel's fundraising page and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. Thanks so much for watching everybody and for making it to the end of the video. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?